This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use the discount code MACVOICES. Welcome back to Mac Voices. This is the Talk of the Mac community. I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, the road to Macworld iWorld 2014 has been a long one. It ends right here because the show starts today as uh, as you see this. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we are ready to stop talking to people. We're just getting started. I did want to, though, end the road to Macworld and start Macworld coverage with this particular interview because I think it's it's very important for you to know about what's coming from our friends at Transporter. Uh, as you know, I've I have a transporter. It's sitting right back there. I've got a few other transporters sitting over there that you can't see. Um, I've got a couple at the office. I, I love this device. This time around, Jim Sherhart is here to tell us about some of the announcements transporters making at the show and has made up to this point. Jim, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, we'll always love being on. Thanks, Chuck. I'm, I'm glad we got to do this before the time that it's going to be released, because we'll both at this point in in real time be running around like crazy people. So we, we can have a nice, calm, relaxed, focused chat. Yeah, on <laughs> yeah definitely the calm before the storm right now. <laughs> Absolutely. So Transporter has been kind of busy. You've been doing things, you know, you brought up the um, – the, the transporter sync. Um, you've been just spreading out the popularity of transporter. What do we have to talk about and what's going this time? Yeah, well, I mean, so it's been a while since I've been on. So, you know, I think, uh, I think last time we chatted was right around the sync launch. So, you know, it's probably good to update people. So, um, sync's going very well. Um, transporter in general, we've seen a ton of momentum. So, uh, about two months back, we announced that we had crossed 10 petabytes. Um, and we're actually quite a bit over 11 petabytes, so it just keeps growing and growing, which is great. So, you know, the network's getting getting built out. Um, people are using the product. Um, but I think the thing that I'm probably most proud of is that over the last year, we've just made an extremely high amount of refinement and features added to the product. So, um, you know, and that was really earmarked last week. We put out an announcement around new features and um, specifically talking about the version 2.5 uh, release that just came out for both Mac uh, and Windows. Um, and that added some really cool new features. Um, one of them that I really like is is uh, what we call uh, special folders. Um, you know, so one of, the, one of the drawbacks of cloud storage services is you have to put everything in their special folder to allow all the magic to, to take place and be able to access stuff and sync stuff. And so um, what we've done with special folders is you can just check a box and have you know, your desktop documents, you know, movies, uh, music, or pictures folders on your Mac automatically sync to your transporter without having to move the file. So that's a really slick feature. Um, we're, we're in beta, but we'll soon be releasing uh, auto uploads for our iOS app so that uh, all your photos and videos can be automatically uh, synced to transporter. You just pick basically a location, whether it's your home or your work. Um, so we've, we've a lot of good features coming. Um, literally in the 2.5 release, we made hundreds of small incremental enhancements, whether it was performance or refinement um, or UI related. So we've made a lot of just, you know, just refinement um, to the product. I think it's really starting to become a nice, stable, mature product that uh, that people can use and, and depend on, which is great. Um, but what the big announcement is for, for Macworld is now that we've done all that and we feel like the product's ready is we're going to be formally announcing uh, a developer's program for transporter. So um, we've had APIs kind of uh, available um, for a while, but what we've really done is we've really cleaned it up. Um, we've really made it something that's digestible and easy to work with for, you know, for a developer. You know, so the thing that I like about it is, you know, there's all apps and especially, you know, you walk around Macworld, you see all the apps that you love, you know, Smile Software is there with PDF Pen. Um, you know, a, a partner of ours, Eurosmarts, is there with Write PDF and Print and Scan. You know, so there's a lot of a lot of great apps that you see uh, at Macworld, and it's like, wouldn't it be great if those apps could work with Transporter? And so, you know, developer program is all about you know making that happen and making it easy for end users um, to be able to use Transporter much like they would another cloud service like maybe Dropbox or something similar. Um, and so the APIs, you know, any the thing I like about it is customers benefit because now by integrating with Transporter, they're going to get a private storage alternative. Um, that has no recurring monthly fees, you know, so rather than just integrating with yet another cloud storage service that just offers kind of a tangential but similar service offering for your app, 
you know, end users now have, you know, the possibility of buying an alternative that, you know, that has some real benefits. Um, and the app developers now have an opportunity to integrate something that gives their users a private alternative. Um, but also, if they've integrated with other cloud storage services, they're going to find this API to be really simple to use, really familiar. And in fact, we've had a couple guys that have, we've given early access to um, that have literally, you know, we've given them access to the API on a Friday, and they've come back Monday and said, yep, I got it all working. <laughs> so, you know, so we know it's really simple for, for a developer to do, something that can probably be done in a couple days. So. <laughs> Now, you know somebody's going to say, well, I've already got Dropbox or I've already got iCloud. I've, I've already got a place to sync my stuff, you know, sure. and that's that's true. But the thing that I find exciting about this is that this is my private cloud. This is my transporter. This means it's not sitting on somebody else's server somewhere. It's sitting on my transporter devices, my Mac. And so I don't have to worry about any of that secure information that I don't really want to have somewhere else being anywhere else. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, if you think about maybe some vertically oriented apps, like maybe we're talking legal, you know, or healthcare related, you know, or, you know, even just a productivity app, like a scanning app that might be used by lawyers or doctors, um, you know, you got to think about where that stuff's ending up, right? And the reality is if Dropbox is easy to use, they might use Dropbox even though they know they shouldn't. You know, and so here's an opportunity for both the app developers and the users to have a private alternative that works, you know, just as just as well as Dropbox, which yeah, I think it's I think it's great. Everybody benefits from it, which I really like. Um, it allows the app guys to differentiate, allows end users to have a private alternative. Um, but also I think at the end of the day, right, I mean, you know, if you've got camera upload on your phone and, and maybe you started using it with Dropbox. You're going to notice it's going to take you to a paid subscription and probably a pretty expensive paid subscription pretty quickly, you know, especially if you've got a household like I do with multiple iOS devices. Um, it's going to get expensive in a hurry. And so I love the fact that now we've got the camera auto upload feature that, you know, and, and then if you have any other app, really, I mean, it, so from that perspective, any app that's maybe photo intensive, graphic intensive, you know, being able to automatically store that stuff on Transporter, just like the camera upload, it just, it makes sense, you know, from a cost perspective too. Yeah, very much so. And that's been one of the big selling points of Transporter is the idea that whether I use Transporter Sync or the regular Transporter, I've got my private cloud storage. I've got it in a very cost-effective fashion. I've got no annual fees. Yeah. I've got and again, I've got the privacy and and that to me somewhere between the the cost and the privacy, I I I'm not sure which feature I think is more important. Um, but I, so maybe I'll just put them both right there and say it's affordable. And now all of a sudden you're free to do things with your your cloud storage that you were never free to do before because it would cost you a fortune. Yeah. And I think the, also this is just us, you know, and I think we understood this from day one, but we really wanted to get the product to a point where we're ready to sort of sort of release it to these app developers. You know, but this is also, you know, just, um, you know, we understand that, the reason, part of the reason Dropbox and Box have been so successful is they've done, they put a lot of effort into building out their ecosystem. Um, and we understand how important that is for transporters' long term success and for end users to have a great experience with the product, right? Um, and so that's why we're really excited about it. We think it's a, you know, it's a major initiative for our company. Um, you know, so, um, so people, if they look online, they'll see the release that, that comes out um, today. They'll be able to see some of the sample apps that we've already got on board. Um, and some of the apps that are going to be coming soon, um, which we're really excited about. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the great thing is anybody can go to our website. You know, we'll have a form available to be able to sign up, um, you know, uh, tell us a little bit about their app and then get access to the API uh, via token system. So, and like I said, it's a really, really simple integration point. So um, just a, it's kind of a win all the way around. So we're really excited about it. Well, I want to make sure that if, if you're in, in San Francisco at Macworld iWorld, stop by the Transporter Drobo booth, talk to Jim, talk to some of the folks there, especially if you're a developer, because this gives you an opportunity to maybe expand your app in a way that you really haven't thought about before. Maybe the cloud storage was limited. Maybe there are features you'd like to build in that could only be done with a transporter-like service because otherwise the, the, the space and the cost would be prohibitive. So this opens up a lot of possibilities for the user. I also think it opens up a lot of possibilities for the developers too. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're super excited to see. You know, we've already had a lot of inbound activity. Just people hear about the product and, and are asking, hey, do you have an API available? And just seeing sort of all the different applications that people are coming at us with, 
is really exciting. So, you know, now that we're getting the awareness out there that, hey, yes, it's available, here's how you go get it, you know, we're excited to see what people what people do with it. Um, you know, we're, yeah, we're, uh, we feel like it's a, it's a really important next step in the product, uh, product evolution, so. This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For some time now, I've been telling you how easy it is to get up and running with Squarespace, how you don't need to code, how all you need to do is make a few choices, select a few options, and bang, your site is online. And all that is 100% true. But what if you want to dig deeper? What if you wanted to find out just how powerful Squarespace can be? To find out all the things Squarespace can do? No, I'm not talking about coding or anything like that. I'm talking about the features that are built into Squarespace that you might not ever want or need. But if you do, they are there, just waiting for you. Squarespace has some amazing documentation under their help section. Documentation called Guides. They cover everything from the basics like getting started, connected accounts, and content blocks, but also things like training on search engine optimization, or SEO, integration with services like Google Analytics, Shopify, and Typekit, and settings to add passwords or even inject your own code. But that's only if you really want to. If you're still afraid that you won't know what to do with your Squarespace site, there are even video walkthroughs to help you build that site. Now, I don't think you will need them, but if you do, they are there, just like all the other great features of Squarespace. And that's what makes Squarespace Squarespace. Just when you think you might get ahead of them, they smile and politely point you to what you want. They never mention the fact that it has been there all along, just waiting for you to catch up. You need to find out what Squarespace can do for you. Whether you want to recite your recipes, feature your photos, or sell your stuff, you can do it on Squarespace. Sign up now for a 14-day free trial and then get 10% off your powerful new site with the code MACVOICES. That's 10% off your first purchase with the code MACVOICES. Do it now and your new site can be online tomorrow. Or today if you hurry. Squarespace. Everything you need to create an exceptional website. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this edition of Mac Voices. Jim, uh, go back for a second when you were talking about the special folders. Uh, yeah. Something that, that comes to mind, it, it would be great if I could click my documents folder and have it sync to my transporter, except for the fact that my documents folder is embarrassingly large. Even oh. even by transporter standards, it's embarrassingly right. large. So is there a way for me to set that so that it's part of the transporter infrastructure that I can access it? from from elsewhere but not actually have all those files copied over to the transporter um so today um at least for the initial implementation uh it would just be uh treated as a standard sync folder um so you would still have those you know on your hard drive now if they're obviously if there's a subset in there that you wanted to go and grab um and to reduce the size of that you could certainly park it in the transporter library folder that we have um, so for, for listeners that aren't aware, the transporter library folder is a special folder that only resides on the transporter or transporters um, and doesn't actually sync to your computer. So that's always an option. Um, but what we, wanted, what we wanted to do with this, at least with the initial version of it, was just create a simple way for people to be able to automatically sync content in place um, where their applications are already pointing the data to as opposed to having to have them completely change their workflow and change their applications to to point to a specific cloud folder. Um, it just makes a lot of sense. And so, um, you know, this is something we may iterate on, we may improve upon uh, down the road, but we're really excited about the initial feedback we've gotten from it. Oh, yeah. I mean, the ability to take all this stuff and now, like you say, not have to rearrange my workflow to accommodate the transporter. The transporter accommodates my workflow. Yeah, and it's actually, and the folders are even available on your iOS device when you do that, which is great. So, um, you know, so once you've done that, if you enable those folders, you know, technically there isn't anything you probably care about on your computer that you can't get to from your iOS device, which is really nice. Yeah, again, the, the more I think about the developer program, the more I've, I really can get excited about it because the cloud, I mean, we've had some limitations with cloud things now, and one of those has been space. 
uh, on whatever cloud service we're talking about. Apple charges beyond a certain point. Of course, Dropbox charges beyond a certain point. I think SugarSync charges now right from from the first byte. Uh, right. You know, all the major – so there's a cost associated with this. And now, not that there's no cost, but there's a fixed one-time cost. I control how much space I want or how much space I need, and then it's done. And for, I, I can outfit myself with a big chunk of cloud sp- space with a transporter that would probably be tri- double or triple if I were trying to buy it, and that would be just for the first year. Then I've got to go back and buy that space again every year. Yeah, I mean, the the cloud space is getting very interesting, um, for sure. So there's a lot of moving parts out there. I mean, uh, you know, our CEO, Jeff Barrell, has said pretty much from day one that these guys who are, you know, a lot of the freemium models, certainly for the smaller players, is simply not sustainable. Um, and you can argue that the bigger players can sort of prop up a freemium model because they can take a loss on on that and make it up with other services. But you know, certainly you're seeing the smaller players get squeezed. I mean, a little bit. So sugar sink, getting rid of the freemium model um, is certainly an interesting way to go. Um, but then, you know, even the recent the recent pricing changes that Google made. So you know, Google obviously dropping pricing, um, putting the pressure on you know some of the some of the smaller players, uh, more independent players. You know, like like a Dropbox to you know try and see what they're going to do on on their pricing. And you know, so I, th- I think for us it's nice because you know at the end of the day, no matter how cheap Google makes it people are always going to be concerned about storing their stuff in the cloud. Um, you know, that uh, the price doesn't fix that issue. You know, so for the users that do care about privacy, even a little bit, you know, our product's going to be very attractive. But then, you know, no matter how inexpensive Google makes it, there is a return on investment of a single point purchase. So, you know, even if a terabyte is only $100 a year instead of $500 a year or whatever, whatever pricing change they made, you know, the reality is you can buy a one terabyte hard drive for about 60 bucks. Um, you know, transporter sync for 99 bucks. You know, so you're looking at an upfront cost of $150, $160, but you own that terabyte for the rest of your life. Um, you know, so I, I still think there's a, a cost argument of a buy and own model and following the disk drive cost curve that it's going to be really hard for even the big guys to match with, with the overhead they have associated with their data centers. Yeah. That's, and it seems like I think we've gotten over some of the paranoia about the cloud, and especially when I can control where my cloud is. If that makes sense if you understand the transporter concept. You know, yeah. I, I know my tra- my cloud is right back here. It's not sitting in a data center in God knows where, and that is very very appealing, uh, just from from a privacy and security standpoint. And I don't have anything that private or that secure, but I just you know you, you'd rather not have the world looking at your stuff. Yeah, and I mean, I think your 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 point from an individual standpoint certainly um, is the same. We hear from a lot of businesses and. You know, we've even seen, you know, regulations go in place in, in different countries where um, if a cloud storage service is offered in that country, the data can't be stored a lot of times in the United States because I think there's, there's a lot of fear from other countries about, you know, what, what our agencies might be doing to data that's stored here. Um, and so certainly, you know, Transporter, we talk a lot about privacy, but Transporter at the end of the day is about control. Um, you control the location of the data. You control the redundancy of the data. Um, yes, it is private. Um, yes, that's a huge benefit. Um, but I think at the end of the day, it's about control because what the cloud allows us to do from a flexibility standpoint is a benefit that's never going to go away, right? I mean, the cloud has changed how we, we use and access our files um, for the better. Um, you know, I think about the old days 15 years ago with NAS, right? And, you know, trying to find where our IT guy stuck that printer driver. I mean, you know, so you have to, you know, change your thinking into how he would organize his data. And what I love about what the cloud does and transporter mimics this is that, you know, you and I can be sharing a folder, but I can have that folder in a completely different location from you. I can even name it differently, but it's the exact same content. So it allows everybody to sort of, um, you know, use their files how they want to on an individual basis, but yet do it in an ecosystem where they're sharing it with friends, family, coworkers. Um, it's very cool. It's very powerful. But yeah, I think at the end of the day, you're right. It's, a, it's, it's about control. And, you know, we all have varying degrees of how much we care about the privacy. Um, but as long as the product delivers on the flexibility and the stuff that we want to do with the cloud, um, you know, I, I think having, having been able to control it and knowing where that data is stored, I don't know why anybody wouldn't want to have that. I mean, it's just an advantage that, you know, it certainly seems like a nice one to have. 
and and again, it's it's the whole idea that what you're doing here, the transporter is so easy to use, and yet conceptually, I think it's take, taken all of us a little while to wrap our heads around the implications, uh, mostly good, um, of of cloud storage and what it means, and how how liberating it is to be able to go anywhere and tap into it. But you're you're looking not to make that compromise of privacy and control, and with the transporter, you don't have to. That's right. Yeah. You get all the convenience without any of the risk. It's kind of how we've been how we've been positioning the product, and we we we, we truly believe that. I think you need a T-shirt with that, Jim. All the yeah. convenience, none of the risk. Got to got to shrink that that down a little bit, there, make it a little bit catchier. <laughs> or you or you could put on some weight. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Or will you be uh, at Macquarie iWorld? Absolutely. Good. Yeah. And, you know, anybody who wants to stop by and talk about the developer program or anything else about Transporter, you know, I'll be around. There'll be plenty of people in the booth. And, you know, we'd love people to stop by and, and you know, come chat with us. Great. Well, I look forward to seeing you in person, even though it will seem like I just saw you this morning. Uh, right. And we'll, you know, see what, what it is hot at the show. And Transporter definitely will be one of those things. All right, great. Well, thanks, Chuck. It's great talking to you. Yep, good to see you, Jim. Thanks a lot. All right, see you at the show. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This has been the Road to Macworld. Now we get into it with uh, the actual Macworld coverage. So we'll be back here soon. But until then, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, app.net, Google+, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date with all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Advertising and sponsorships handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. <laughs>